Hello and welcome to the fourth video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be covering some more c -sharp programming to be able to control our player. Remember to click subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find the assets and scripts that we use in this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. And now, on with the tutorial. So last time, if you remember, we used a script to make our player here move forwards. And they still do that as intended. So it's all good and well having that, but what about if we want to control our character? Because we can press all the keys on the keyboard, it does absolutely nothing right now. Well, back in our script, the great thing here is we don't really need to create another script we can build upon what we've already created. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a variable that will allow us to control the horizontal speed because it needs to be a value, otherwise you're still not going to go anywhere. We're also then going to use some code to detect whether we're pressing the correct keys to move in the correct direction. So let's start with another variable. So after our public float player speed equals two, we need to go down and we need to have public, float, and we'll have this as horizontal speed. And we'll make that a little bit faster than our player speed, just for convenience. So we'll set that as three with a semicolon. So once again, what we've done is we've said, yes, we want to see the variable in the inspector panel. It's going to be a float and it's called horizontal speed and it's going to be equals to three. Now, how do we make it so as we can move our character? Well, we do it inside the void update. We do it after we already have transform.translate. So after this line of code, hit return and go down. We now need to create an if statement to say, are we moving and are we not? So basically, are we pressing the A key to go left or are we pressing D key to go right or are we doing nothing at all? So to do that, let's first detect if we are pressing the correct key on the keyboard. So we can say if, and in brackets, key code, uh, sorry, no, input, isn't it? We need to put input, we need to detect an input, obviously. Dot get key, and in brackets, we put key code dot a, and close bracket, and close bracket again, and open curly bracket, and hit return. So what have we done here? We are basically saying, if we are pressing A, then we do the following, and that's dictated by the open curly brackets here and the close curly brackets. So anything that we put in the next couple of lines, after this bracket and before this bracket, it will execute if this condition is correct. So if we press A, the next line of code will occur. What is that next line of code? Well, we use the same methodology as we use to move our player forward, except rather than the player speed, we use the horizontal speed. So to do that, we say transform dot translate. And in open brackets, we use the vector three again, except we don't use forward this time, we can use left. So vector three dot left. And then we have to multiply that by the time dot delta time. Because remember, we want this to be in relation to the game speed. We don't want to do this to do its thing at its own speed. It needs to be done at the game speed. And we also need to do it according to whatever horizontal speed we have set. So you can see when we set horizontal speed equals three, we can say horizontal speed close bracket and semicolon. So what does this do now? If we press A, we move left. That's as simple as it is, but how do we move right? Well, we, again, we can use the same methodology that we've just written. And instead of saying input key code A, it will be the opposite. We're using WASD in this case. We will add the arrow keys a little later on, but for now, we just want to use WASD as that's the most common. So we need to say if input, and if you notice, it's already predicting what we're going to put. You can see in the uh, 
grayed out marking here, it already thinks we're going to put input.keycode.keycode.d. Yeah, we're going to do that. So it's not, you know, it's not really think of it as AI or anything. It's more kind of predicting what it thinks we're going to do next. Because we've already written this get key key code A, it's assuming that, yeah, the next one is probably going to be D because that's the most logical thing to do. So keep an eye out for these things when you're programming because it certainly helps quite a lot. So if you press tab, it does it all for you. So rather than have to type out the whole thing again, press tab and it does it. It doesn't always predict correctly, but keep an eye out for when it does because it's very useful. Speaking of not having to type everything out once again, we can do the same with this line of code. So because we want to move right, we can still use vector3.left, but we have to turn it into a negative so it goes the opposite direction. So if, for example, the horizontal speed 3, let's say this number that it generates here is 6, if we press key code D, we want it to generate negative 6. So to do that, let's copy that line of code place it in here, and after the horizontal speed, multiply it by negative one and save the script. So just those couple of lines will now allow us to move our character left and right. So let's head back into Unity. And if we click on our player, we can see, yep, there is our horizontal speed. Now, before we go any further, let's reset our rotation Make sure everything is 0, 0, 0, so as the Z or Z axis is pointing in the direction we're going, because then that will make sure the orientation of left and right is correct. Now, if we press play now, it's not going to be very good because the camera's still not attached to anything. It's just floating nowhere and looking nowhere. So what we need to do is attach the main camera to our player. So we can drag and drop onto player and it will now become an object of the player. So wherever the player moves, that's where the camera will also move. So let's zero out the axis on this and center the camera to our player. We can then drag the camera backwards, drag the camera upwards, and let's rotate on the X so we look down at our character. Perfect. So if we press play now, we have the ability to move our character forward and left and right, and the camera will follow at all times. There are different ways to make a camera follow a player, but for now, but for all intents and purposes, attaching it to the player is quick, simple, and it gets the job done. So let's press play and let's see how this looks. So, yep, we're moving forward. So now let's move left and let's move right. And you can see, you can do it as much as you want. Perfect. We still intersect objects, but don't worry about that for now. That's something we can fix later. However, if we press the arrow keys, absolutely nothing happens at all. So let's now add in some more code to give us options. Options are always great in games. So let's head back to our coding. And where we have if input.getKey keycode A, after this bracket, but before the last bracket, we need to put space. And here, it doesn't really matter what you do. If you want to press one or the other or two together, well, you know, pressing A key and the left key at the same time just to move left is not sensible. So we need to have an or statement rather than an and statement. Now, when coding like this, to say or, you have a double bar. So if you don't know what a bar is, it's usually either next to your arrow keys on a smaller keyboard, or it's next to the Z or Z key if you hold shift. So it's a double bar like this. And if you have problems with this script at all, it will there will be a link to it in the description and in the pinned comment if you want to go and download it. So we've already got our key code A. So what is the other option to go left? Well, it's the left arrow, isn't it? So we can say input dot get key, and in brackets, key code dot left arrow, and close bracket. So you can see there, all we've done is add the equivalent here. So this now says, if we press A, or we press left arrow, then we move left. So now we logically need to do the same with this one. And that is really, really simple. All we need to do, same again, double bar, 
and we say input dot get key and in brackets we say key code dot uh, right arrow close bracket it really is as simple as that so let's now save that script and let's head back into unity into unity and now all we need to do is press play and we should be able to use our arrow keys and indeed we can now you can't tell if i'm using arrow keys or not but i am so <laughs> yeah you just have to trust me on that one and like i said if you have problems with the script just go to the description or the pinned comments and you can download the uh, script by clicking the link there so next tutorial we're going to carry on with even more c sharp programming and what we're going to do is we're going to create some nested if functions. So it's going to get a bit deeper in programming, but we need to make sure that our character does not go any further than the boundaries of this actual level. Because right now, if we were to play, we can keep going left, we can keep going right as far as the game will take us. But we need to be able to stop before we pass over into the void. So that's what we're doing in the next tutorial. Remember to subscribe, click on the notification bell and you can stay up to date with every tutorial and I'll see you next time.